Hello and welcome back to A Splashy Paint. Now it's time to visit my own home base studio for part one of today's Try Your Hand Up project. We will be using a reference photograph to paint a picture perfect autumn landscape. Hi folks, now you might remember a while back we took some photographs of Polter Country Park in Langworth in Derbyshire. I've come back to the studio now after having a look at some of the photographs and the great thing about digital photography is that there's no limits to the amount of photos you can take really. This is one I particularly liked. It's got all the nice autumn trees and some nice contrasting colours in it and a really crisp blue sky. So I've sketched it out and I'm going to go through the painting of it now. I have done a little bit of artistic licence as I've lowered the horizon just a touch. It's pretty much spot on a third. One, two, three. And that'll make a really good composition. So sketched and ready to go. First job is to get some masking tape and just have a few moments sticking it somewhere and then taking the stickiness away stick it to yourself and because the trees are quite dark at the back in comparison to the sort of rock face I'm just going to work along and then use my finger and just press this down walk along the edge and that will give me a nice random rocky texture to work through there we go so it's all nicely pressed. You could use your nails just to get a bit more character into that if you wanted to. But that's ready to go. I want to use this uh, nice soft extra large tree and texture brush. Make sure it's nice and clean. It is a really soft brush and it does hold a lot of colour so don't have too much water on the brush. I'm just going to dampen the paper. Of course it's always advisable to have a bit of kitchen roll to one side. If you do find yourself putting too much water on it any time, the best thing to do is just get a piece of kitchen roll and just lightly kind of skim over the surface of your paper and that will just reduce the amount of uh, water that's on your paper. One thing you don't want is over soaked. You want it to be just glazed in water. Quite often I will put the water on and then put the kettle on and then come back and just give it a few seconds to soak in. But that's about where you want to be. If you get any hairs on your paper, just leave them. If you try and poke them off you will cause problems. So I'm looking down the edge, that's all nicely covered. I want to go for a very, very pale natural yellow. Very pale natural yellow first of all. Um, the nice thing about this brush is it makes the skies quite flat. That's just at the bottom of the sky, that is really weak there. Just glazing it in, big brush strokes. That's better than seeing pure white, okay? I clean that colour off. Again, always give it a bit of a squeeze or wipe the excess off somewhere else. And then use a nice, thick, natural blue. Now, natural blue is my own personal design of blue. You could use ultramarine or cobalt. This is a little bit brighter, this colour. It's more like a natural sky blue. And you can afford to be quite heavy with this. Quite strong with the colour. Because you can see from the photograph, it's a very powerful, very definite sky and then big sweeps across the top there we go so a square brush is sometimes better than a, uh, a round brush because it gives you more even gradients in your skies as you come down towards the yellow I'm going to clean my brush off get all the blue out of it give it a good squeeze there so it's just damp and just dry it off on some kitchen roll and then just basically fade all that away so it all nicely blends into the yellow. You can go up, you can go down and it will soften and it will blend and it will clean up the sky and of course it always dries cleaner. There you go, so that's a pretty straightforward blue sky there. I've got a hair there but that will just disappear, don't try and poke the hairs out by any means. So again, I'm just banding over the top and just smoothing everything away. There we go, perfect. Now it was a very definite blue sky, but there was a little cloud in there, so I'm just going to get a bit of kitchen roll again, tiny bit of kitchen roll. Just twist it into a bit of a ball and then just lightly add a little bit of a cloud just coming up from the background there. You can see it's kind of flat, the tissue there. And then just lightly very gently wipe the bottoms of the clouds 
Now it's up to you, I mean you're talking artistic license, you could have as many clouds as you like on this to be honest. Wouldn't really matter that much. Just gonna bring one up there as well. And again, very lightly, just streak away the base of it until it lightly fades into the uh, into the picture. There you go, so that's my sky. And then I want to use a bit of a tree brush. I've got a medium sized tree and texture brush there. The sky is still damp, so I want to get some distance to this. Aureolin and some natural blue will give you a, a kind of medium or average green colour. Not too thick at this stage. I want to stipple across. You can see the paper's damp. So what you get in there is a bit of bleeding paint, which is a useful thing, useful phrase. Now because it's an autumn scene, as we do this, I could introduce a little bit more yellow as we get towards the edges. This is just literally straight in the aureole in. And I'm now going to mix all the colours together on the paper, making it bigger as it gets further over for those trees. So I'm, I'm going to do a lot of dabbing in the, uh, in the water pot, in the paint pot, and just keep adding various tones of colour. I'm just going to get a bit more blue in with the yellow. It's quite a strong colour as well, but very spotty. Most of the trees in this particular scene, in fact all of them from what I can see, are silver birch trees of some shape or form. So it's a very definite shape of tree. Very fine leaf, so I'm doing very gentle taps at this point. And of course it's gone from the nice outer focus to the in focus there. More yellow. And we're starting to work up towards the solid trees there as well. Over this side as well. So I'm using the flat part of the brush. I'm going to bring in some rusty colours very shortly as well. Just add in a bit more yellow to that colour. Nice golden. Nice golden colours coming through there. All the time looking at the photograph for reference. Gentle taps on the edges. Some of the trees are actually quite pointy. There was a bit of a lean on the trees. Um, I noticed while I was there that that was the case because it was sort of, it's one of the features I liked about the picture, it sort of came in from the sides. There's a bit more yellow on the bush there. So the paper is still damp, which is great because it's just given me the right amount of stippling time. Again, I'm almost doing like an acrylic kind of painting here using very thick aureolin. But also if you think about it, because the sky is blue, it's going to mix with that and it's going to give you a greeny tinge anyway. So that yellow is quite important for this one because that was one of the striking colours on the actual day. Get some over this side. Again, the paper's just nicely damp enough to let this go. You can see the paper's a little bit wavy, that's because I've put a lot of water on. That will flatten out. If you, if you don't like wavy paper, then stretch it before you start painting is the answer to that one. Stretching, of course, is to stick it on all four sides with a gum tape. Saturate the paper and let it dry naturally, and then paint on it, that's stretching the paper. So again, just playing around with the colour tone. I've added a bit more blue to the colour, just for this bottom corner, because that'll make it really dark. Right in that corner, that's nice for the composition, that. There you go. And then over this side, just for continuity, we'll get that matching. So we're just about at the stage where we need to let leave that area alone. 
There you go. So it's just being gentle with the taps. One thing not to do is to plough straight in and tap, tap, tap. So let it all be nice and gentle. Let it blend into the shapes of the trees. One thing you notice when you go outside or look at your photographs is just how much darkness and shadows there is in trees. Okay, so that's the nice colours coming either side. It's kind of getting there. We clean that brush, give it a bit of a squeeze through the tissue, and just pull a little bit of burnt sienna in there, but not too much of this. Just fractions of water. I'm quite a dry watercolour painter, if that makes sense. I don't use masses of uh, water. So I'm just adding a little bit of autumn rusty colours, just letting it all mix in with the area. A nice bit of burnt sienna is like putting a bit of red in the picture, it can really complement the greens. And just add in the odd little spot of that colour. Okie dokie. I'm then going to use a palette knife, or you could use a um, craft knife, something what's got a blunt edge to it. And because they're birch trees, they're very, got all these nice fine branches. A palette knife is just as good as anything, to be honest, for the silver birch trees. And you can probably say I've got a set of all different sizes there. So I'm adding a fair bit of detail there. Uh, and you can see it's really effective, but I'm gonna go for a slightly wider palette knife. This one there, just because some of the trees have actually got a nice broad trunk on them. I don't want too much of this, just a little bit extra. It's going to be quite effective. There we go. And then I'll put those away. And I'm just going to go for a rigger brush, a long pointy skinny one. So just adding a little bit of natural grey to the burnt sienna to make it a bit of a dark grey brown colour, which is a great colour for trees, for the fine bits of trees. And I always find a good tip is to lightly roll it over the tissue first, just so it's got that little point on the actual rigger brush. I don't want too much of this, just a little bit of fine branches on. Some of the edges, more of the close-up trees, you can see how delicate those are going in there. And it's more so on the ones on the side, the taller ones. So these are very delicate branches. Just adding a few of these, not stacks and stacks of them. Just something over there, really. Very feather-like little paint. And then if we take off carefully the masking tape, this is where the people come and stalk, very carefully take the masking tape off and hopefully if it starts to rip, by the way, what you can do is you can actually stop and go the other way or use a hairdryer as you do it and it should come off without too much problem. So, I think there's just one quick thing we can get away with doing and that's using a large brush and some natural yellow, very, very pale. This is a size 20 brush. I'm just going to put this footpath in. It kind of comes down into the grassy area and then clean the brush off and then just basically make it all blend into the surrounding areas. And that is a great place to stop. And we'll go back to the studio. As you can see, reference photographs can act as a really useful tool for helping you revisit a location or capture something that you want to paint at a later date. Join us after the break for a return visit to my home base studio where I'll be adding depth and detail into the mid and foreground areas and finish off today's autumn scene. We'll see you soon.